Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the quadrilaterals practice questions. If you need any extra help on quadrilaterals, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number two, there's a video tutorial there on quadrilaterals. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Question number one. Question number one says the names of five quadrilaterals are given, so we've been given square, rhombus, rectangle, kite, and trapezium. And three of them are drawn below, so we've got ship A, ship B, and ship C. And we've been asked to complete these statements. So ship A is called a, well if we look at ship A, it's got four equal length sides, it's got four right angles, four lines of symmetry, it's a square. So ship A is a square. Okay, ship B, so ship B, if we have a look at ship B, it's got one pair of parallel lines, so it's a trapezium, so trapezium. And that's our option there. And finally, shape C is called up. If we have a look at shape C, it's clearly a kite, where it's got one line of symmetry, two pairs of equal length sides, the bottom two and the top two, one line of symmetry, and the opposite angles here and here are equal to each other, so that's called a kite. So shape A is called a square, shape B is called a trapezium, and shape C is called a kite. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says, a quadrilateral is drawn below, so we've got this quadrilateral, and it's a kite, and we have to write down in part A the name of the quadrilateral, so that's a kite. Part B, part B says draw any lines of symmetry on the quadrilateral, and part B, and part B asks us to draw any lines of symmetry on the quadrilateral, so a kite has got one line of symmetry, and in this case it's a vertical line of symmetry like so, so we'll just do that. So there we go, there's our line of symmetry. So part A, we were asked to write down the name of the quadrilateral, so it's a kite. And part B, we were asked to draw any lines of symmetry on the quadrilateral, so we've got that vertical line of symmetry. Okay, question number three. So question number three, we've been given this shape, it's got two right angles, one pair of parallel lines, so it's gonna be a trapezium. And we've been asked to write down the mathematical name of the shape above, so it's a trapezium. Okay, question number four. So question 4a says, draw a kite on the grid below. So we've got our grid and we're going to draw a kite. So remember, a kite's got one line of symmetry. And if we're going to be doing it upright, then the two top lines are the same length as each other, like so. And then the two bottom lines are the same length as each other, like so. And there would be a kite on our grid. Okay, question B. Part B says draw a parallelogram on the grid below. So a parallelogram has got two pairs of parallel sides. The top two sides are parallel to each other. So that length would be parallel to the line beneath it. And let's just move it over a bit something like that and then the two sides would be parallel to each other so the left hand side and the right hand side so a parallelogram i sometimes like to think of it as a pushed over rectangle it has two pairs of parallel sides the top and the bottom and the left and the right and that's it so that's a parallelogram okay question number five okay question number five Question number five says a quadrilateral is drawn below. So we've got this quadrilateral and it's got two pairs of parallel sides. So as you can see, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are parallel and we're showing that by the arrows. And the top is parallel to the bottom. And again, because we've got two arrows on each of them, that means that they're parallel to each other. And part A says, write down the name of this quadrilateral. It's a parallelogram, parallelogram. And part B, part B asks us how many lines of symmetry does the shape have? Well, a parallelogram actually doesn't have any lines of symmetry. If you tried to do a vertical line of symmetry, this point would fold over here somewhere, and this point would fold over there somewhere. If you tried to do a horizontal line of symmetry, this uh, point would fold down there somewhere. So it wouldn't have any lines of symmetry, so zero. And part C asks us to draw a quadrilateral with two lines of symmetry. Well, I'm gonna draw a rectangle for this one. So a rectangle would have two lines of symmetry, so it would look something like this. So we'd have a vertical line of symmetry and a horizontal line of symmetry. So that would be a quadrilateral, a rectangle, with two lines of symmetry, a vertical line of symmetry and a horizontal line of symmetry. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number six. There are two quadrilaterals below. So here we've got a quadrilateral and here we've got a quadrilateral. And we've been asked to write down the names of each quadrilateral. So our first one is a rectangle. So let's write that down, a rectangle. And our second quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So a parallelogram. And part B, we're asked to draw a rhombus in the space below. So a rhombus is a four-sided shape where all four sides are the same length. The opposite angles are equal to each other and it would have two lines of symmetry. So that's a rhombus. Okay, question number seven. So question number seven says below is a rectangle. So we've got this rectangle and we've got to tick the correct boxes for each of the statements. So our first statement, a rectangle has four right angles. Well, it has a right angle there, a right angle there, a right angle there, and a right angle there. That's true, a rectangle would have four right angles. 
Our next statement is a rectangle would have one pair of parallel lines. Well, actually, a rectangle has two pairs of parallel lines. The top is parallel to the bottom, but the left-hand side would be parallel to the right-hand side. So that's false. It would have two pairs of parallel lines. Our next statement, a rectangle has four lines of symmetry. Well, it doesn't. It has two lines of symmetry, a vertical line of symmetry and a horizontal line of symmetry. The diagonals don't work as lines of symmetry for a rectangle, so that is false. Okay, and then if we have a look at our last statement, our last statement is a rectangle has a rotational symmetry order two. So that means if we spin it for 360 degrees, it should land on itself twice. So let's have a look. So here's our rectangle, and if we rotate it through 180 degrees, it lands on itself once. And then back around to 360 degrees, it lands on itself twice. So that rectangle does have rotational symmetry order two, so that's true. So a rectangle has four right angles, true. A rectangle has one pair of parallel lines, false, it has two pairs of parallel lines. A rectangle has four lines of symmetry, false, it has two. And a rectangle has rotational symmetry, order two, true. Okay, let's have a look at question number eight. Okay, question number eight, we've been given a list of quadrilaterals, kite, rectangle, rhombus, square, and parallelogram. And for each of the following descriptions, we have to choose the correct name from the list. So part A says four right angles. So I'm thinking of a rectangle or a square here. It has two lines of symmetry. Well, it's not then gonna be a square. A square has four lines of symmetry, so our answer would be rectangle. Okay, part B. Part B says two pairs of parallel sides. Well, that could be a rectangle, rhombus, square, parallelogram. It just rules out a kite because a kite doesn't have two pairs of parallel sides. The opposite angles are equal, okay, and it's got no lines of symmetry. Well, a rectangle has two lines of symmetry, a rhombus has two lines of symmetry, a square has four lines of symmetry, and a parallelogram has no lines of symmetry. So that means that part B will be a parallelogram. So parallelogram. And part C says, all four sides are the same length, so that means it's going to be a square or rhombus. But there's no right angles, so that means it's going to be a rhombus. It's not going to be a square because a square has four right angles. So that would be a rhombus. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number nine. So in question number nine, we've been given the names of three quadrilaterals, a square, a kite, and a parallelogram. And we've got to write each name in the correct position in the table. So we've got two columns, line symmetry and no line symmetry. So if it's got line symmetry, it goes in either this box or this box, or if it has no line symmetry, it goes in that box or that box. And then in terms of our rows, we've got two pairs of parallel lines and no pairs of parallel lines, so there are options. So let's start off with a square. A square has line symmetry, so it's going to go in either of these two boxes. A square does have two pairs of parallel lines. The top's parallel to the bottom, and the left-hand side's parallel to the right-hand side. So a square is going to go in here because it has two pairs of parallel lines, the top and the bottom, and the left and the right, and it's also got line symmetry. Okay, our next shape, our next shape's a kite. So a kite has line symmetry, so it's going to go in either one of these two boxes. And we've got the options of either two pairs of parallel lines, so a kite doesn't have any pairs of parallel lines, or no parallel lines, so that's going to be a kite. So a kite will go there. Our next shape, so our next shape is a parallelogram, so that doesn't have any lines of symmetry, so it's going to go in either of these two boxes. And it does have two pairs of parallel lines, the top and the bottom, and the left and the right, the hints in the name, parallelogram, so it's going to go there, parallelogram. Okay, question number 10. Okay, question number 10. We've been asked to complete the table below. So we've got this table with square, rhombus, and trapezium. So I've drawn a square, a rhombus, and two trapezia. So we've got a trapezium, which is one with a line of symmetry, and another trapezium, which doesn't have a line of symmetry. So there's two possible trapezia there. And trapeziums, trapezia. And we've been asked to complete the table. So let's start off with our top row, which is the number of pairs of parallel sides. So a square we've been told has got two pairs of parallel sides, and that makes sense. The top is parallel to the bottom, and the left hand side is parallel to the right hand side. So it's got two pairs of parallel sides. A rhombus. A rhombus also has two pairs of parallel sides, so that side and that side would be parallel, and this side and this side would be parallel, so it's got two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezium, well a trapezium only has one pair of parallel sides. Here you can see the top and the bottom, and here the top and the bottom also. It could be standing upright, it might be the left hand side and the right hand side, but a trapezium will only have one pair of parallel sides. And then we're asked, are the diagonals equal in length? And we've got to answer yes or no. So let's draw the diagonals on each of them. So the square, there's a diagonal in green from there to there and there to there. That would be the same length for each of those. So the answer for the square will be yes, the diagonals are the same length. 
Okay, now the rhombus. So let's draw the diagonals by joining up the opposite corners of the quadrilateral. So there and there. They're clearly not the same length as each other. So the answer for the rhombus will be no. And then for a trapezium, we're asked, are the diagonals always equal in length? Now, we're told the answer is no. Let's have a look and see why. If we've got this trapezium, the diagonals are equal in length there and there. But we can also have trapeziums, trapezia, where they're not equal in length. Those two aren't the same length as each other. So they're not always equal in length. So no. Okay, question number 11. So question number 11 asks us to draw a quadrilateral that has got rotational symmetry order two. So that means that if we spin it in a full circle, it'll land on itself twice. So the two quadrilaterals that are coming to my mind would be a rectangle or a parallelogram. So let's draw those, a rectangle and a parallelogram. So a parallelogram would look something like that, or a rectangle would look something like that. And both of those shapes, if you spin them through 360 degrees, they will land on themselves twice. Okay, let's have a look at question number 12. So question number 12 says, James draws a quadrilateral with two pairs of equal length sides. So he's drawn a quadrilateral with two pairs of equal length sides. He says the quadrilateral must be a rectangle, as shown here. So the top is equal length to the bottom, and the left-hand side will be an equal length to the right-hand side. So he's correct with that. Or a parallelogram. So as you can see, the top length is the same length as the bottom length, and the left-hand side is the same length as the right-hand side. So explain why James is incorrect. So he says that the quadrilateral must be a rectangle or a parallelogram. So those two are quadrilateral with two pairs of equal length sides, but are there any more? Well, let's have a look at this one. But it could also be a kite, because a kite has two pairs of equal length sides as well. As you can see, the top length here and this top length are equal length to each other, and the length at the bottom here and this side are equal to each other. And remember, a kite's got that one line of symmetry, so the opposite sides would be the same length as each other. So the, a kite is an example of a quadrilateral that could have two pairs of equal length sides, but isn't a rectangle or a parallelogram, so James is incorrect. It could also be a kite. It could be a kite. Um, it could also be a delta. So as you can see, here's a delta. The top lengths and the bottom lengths are equal to each other as well. Okay, question number 13. So question number 13. Question number 13 says, Maisie draws a trapezium. So I've drawn three possible trapezia, or trapeziums, whichever the plural of trapezium you want to use. So we've got three possible trapezia here that I've just sketched. One with a line of symmetry, one with right angles and not a line of symmetry. And I've just drawn a vertical one here just for fun. And we've got four statements. So a trapezium has one pair of parallel lines, a trapezium has one line of symmetry, a, a trapezium has rotational symmetry order two, and all sides of a trapezium have different lengths. And we've got options of true, maybe true, or false. So the first statement is, a trapezium has one pair of parallel lines. Now that's a key feature of a trapezium, that it has one pair of parallel lines. So that's definitely true, as you can see, the top's parallel here to the bottom, the top's parallel to the bottom, here the left-hand side's parallel to the right-hand side. So that is true. Our next statement, a trapezium has one line of symmetry. Well, as you can see here, this one would have one line of symmetry vertically, but these two don't have any lines of symmetry, so that may be true. Our next statement, a trapezium has rotational symmetry order two. So that means that if we spin it in a full circle, that it'll land on itself twice. Well, that's not going to be true, that if you took this trapezium and you span it around, it would only land on itself once. So it wouldn't have rotational symmetry, or we call that it's got rotational symmetry order one, but it definitely hasn't got rotational symmetry order two, so that is false. And our last statement is, all sides of a trapezium have different lengths. So if you look at this one, this one, they look like they all do have different lengths. And this one, they look like they've all got different lengths. But if you look at this one with the line of symmetry, the left-hand side and the right-hand side would have the same length as each other. So it may be true that they are all different lengths, but it may not be true. So that's going to be maybe true. And that's our options. True, maybe true, false, and maybe true. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 14. Okay, question number 14. So question number 14, our last question says, James wants to draw a quadrilateral, CDEF, such that CD equals 4 centimetres, the angle CDE equals 90 degrees, CD is twice the length of DE, CF is parallel to DE, and CF equals 5 centimetres. And we've been asked to complete CDEF on the centimetre group below. So let's have a look at our key information and look and see what we've been given so far. So we're told that CD is equal to 4 centimetres, and it's a centimetre square grid, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, so that is 4 centimetres long. Fantastic. We're then told the angle CDE, so CDE, so it's 90 degrees, so that means that E will have to be along here somewhere. It could possibly be on this side, but there's not much room, so I'm going to think that E is going to be along here somewhere. Now we're told that the line CD, this line, is twice the length of the line DE. Now if CD is equal to 4 centimetres, and it's twice the length of DE, that means DE must be equal to 2 centimetres, because CD is twice the length of DE. 
So we know the point E is along this line somewhere because there's a right angle, 90 degrees, C, D, E. And we know that the line D, E is two centimeters. So that means that the point E must be here. The point E is there, such that that's a right angle and that that line is two centimeters long. So we've done part of the quadrilateral so far. We're then told that CF, so the point F is going to be somewhere else on this grid and we're going to join it up to be a quadrilateral. We're told that CF is parallel to DE. So DE is here. So that means that CF, F must be along here somewhere so that CF is parallel to DE. And we're told that CF equals five centimeters. So if we go back here, let's do five centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. So that means the point F must be there. So let's join those up and see what we get. So we've joined it up and we've made our quadrilateral, so our trapezium, and let's just double check all the, the conditions and check we've got it right. So CD equals four centimeters, yes. The angle CDE is 90 degrees, that's correct. So we know that point E had to be along this line somewhere. Next, CD is twice the length of DE. So CD was four centimeters, so we halved it to get two centimeters. So that means the E must have been here, so there. We're told that CF is parallel to DE, so we then knew that the point F had to be along this line somewhere. And then we were told that CF equals five centimeters. So we counted one, two, three, four, five centimeters. So that means that that line is five centimeters and that's the shape on the grid. So we've completed it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the quadrilaterals practice questions on corporate maths. I really hope you found it useful. And if you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you do need any extra help on quadrilaterals, if you go to corporatemavs.com forward slash content and scroll down to video number two, there's a video tutorial there on quadrilaterals. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But as I said, I hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.